stream yards excellent good morning kim right morning. today yeah today is the thursday the 4th of may may the 4th be with you it's uh just gone 10 o'clock um uh, what do you say? Well, we said Greenwich Mean Time. Do you say, do you act on GB time, UK time? What would you say? Yeah, yeah, I, what, wherever I am. So, yeah. It's general, not excellent. It's not a massive so, issue for me. Some people are very um, sort of pedantic about it. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm right. very easy, actually, in many, many ways. So. Excellent. So for people that are just joining us, I know this is an early live, but Kim's obviously got a uh, family uh, that she needs to attend to, a young family, right, yeah. um, in the evening. So she can only do this now. And um, so 10 o'clock, we're here. <laughs> Hope everyone's got their coffees and ready and awake. Um, Kim was referred to me, and I'm hoping that he's watching. I did send him a message. I hope he's going to get it by a friend of mine yes he's got the message whose um judgment i trust very much uh the last gentleman he referred to me was absolutely brilliant so i don't know much about you kim and i didn't want to know because i like my lives to be quite spontaneous um so but i know that you've come really highly recommended so what I'm going to do now is just ask you to introduce yourself, tell us a bit of your background before we talk about your process. Hi, Kim. Hi. Um, right. So I, <clears throat> since I was 16, I was, you know, I was one of those kids that used to watch a lot of L.A. law with my family. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I sort of fell in love with the, the so-called law uh thinking yeah. that there are you know that there is justice and things are there so i sort of and when i was um started my a levels i thought i'd try something new so i thought i'd go to study um law psychology sociology um sociology turned out to be i had a knack for um my teacher thought i've done this before i didn't have a clue and yet apparently i was top out of everyone Ooh. i had a natural understanding for different perspectives. I didn't have to agree with them, but I could understand where people would come from. And mm. then with the law, I was pretty bad with remembering all the information that they would throw at me. Um, but I was apparently the only one that would understand how to fit it in and how to apply it to cases that I, again, um, was thrown at. So and as time went on, I didn't carry that on uh, for personal reasons. I ended up um, studying reflexology. I went into Gaia healing. Uh, my heart was always about helping. It was just that uh, a pull. Um, and in the end, I went back to finish my law degree. By the time I was 32, I actually completed my law degree. Wow. Um, and the the banks actually promised to say right i had one exam left which turned out to be trust law and brilliant I had to redo the trust law and they said well if, if you pass this one we will give you the money to carry on to do your you know to, to do mm. the practice course well i passed the exam but that same week um the the bank of uh which bank was it in um that fell um there was a bank that fell and it was actually in, in a lot of people were running in to get their money. Um, what was that? The, which one was it? They don't exist anymore. Uh, um, took over that bank. Yeah, I but, can't remember. Well, can't anyway, remember. That, uh, Northern Rock. I think it was Northern Rock. So that week, all that fell. And I thought, and the bank, my bank felt, phoned me up and they said, sorry, we can't give you the money. You're 32, you're 31. You know, it's too risky. You've got no collateral. You've got nothing. And with that, I sort of couldn't talk for about five weeks. I choked. Mm. And I would stare at the ceiling for five weeks thinking, how do I start my life again? Um, it's painful, isn't it? It's painful it, when they do this and it's their money. But once you put your money in the bank, it's yeah. theirs. And also, if you want to borrow money. Yeah. So um, 
in the end, I, I sort of said, I mean, I spent an extra four years in order to get to this degree and to, mm. to complete And I said, do you think I would have spent so much hard time, you know, risking that I have to get this right? Mm. And they said, well, sorry, at that the end, that was the end of it. Uh, and I rebuilt my life, you know. Determination, a I drive, rebuilt, passion. I said, yeah, I, I got married, I had my kids, and then COVID came. Yeah. And again, everything um, everything I do is from my observations and, and what's right. You feel mm. what's right. Yeah. When, so I always had a legal background. I also had a very spiritual background because I've, I'm not religious, but I've had certain experiences that showed me that I am being held. Literally, someone is holding my hand through every situation I go through, and it can be a last minute saving. You know, someone mm -hmm. will just, I will be at my, my worst position and then something will happen to save my life, yep. save my situation. So I have that belief because I've experienced it too many times. Mm -hmm. um, so I have the legal background. I have my, my heart. It really is. I wake up thinking, how am I going to help someone? I don't have anything else um, other than that mm. because that's just me. And I've always been yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah. So then when COVID came, um, I was also one of those that was, um, you know, would clean the bags as you go into the house yeah yeah so yeah. I had the fist so I I knew and I sort of bought into that but my husband didn't very Ooh. very quickly within a month he said something he was looking outside the window he said something is wrong yeah um and then it was the same and whenever we had our kids now a lot of people talk about things like birth the birth certificate scam and things like that and that's another instinct that my husband had. And he, every time he said, I had, when I had to register my children, he said, what would happen if you didn't do it? Mm. How many children have you got? Three. Right, so yeah. So every yeah. time it came up in his mind. So it's very, very interesting how he had the instincts. Mm. I had the education side. And then as time went on, I sort of learnt more. And it's... and. Um, it was just a very beautiful um, expansion of of two different worlds actually do coming together from different perspectives. Mm. When he had the instinct, I learned the know-how. Yeah, yeah. So this is where I am now. Um, and I, I sort of hit on, um, I started off with the common law, with the common right. law courts actually, mm -hmm. which everyone has different ideas of their experiences with them. My experience. Yep was not a bad one right okay um but as time went on i also learned that there's a lot more than just common law mm -hmm. that there is there are three jurisdictions which are biblical right um and i learned that when i found an american group mm -hmm. and i found that there are a lot of people standing up for their rights now Yep. yep. Um, and uh, and actually becoming what's called American state nationals. Right. Okay. So, what can I just ask? What those jurisdictions, biblical jurisdictions, right. are? Yes. So it literally is in Genesis, and it says that when um, when God made man, He gave man dominion over mm -hmm. the land, the air, and the water. Yep. Yep. That's and it. That's yep. And that's actually the abbreviations for law. Yep. And Lander, those are, Walter, that, yeah. yeah, and that's the real law. Mm. So instead of me learning, what I was learning all the years was legal. Mm. Yeah. And they sort of superimpose it as law when it's not law. Mm. So there must be quite an awakening for someone who studied law <clears throat> to realise all them years it wasn't actually law you were studying, but legal acts, statutes, legislation. Absolutely, because when, when you go to, to university, they they tell you that the highest level, at that time we had the European Union. So they yep. would say, you know, the highest level is the House of Lords, and then you have the European Union, um, and then you have uh, another one, and, and you don't think further than that. No. Nothing. It, it ends there. So whenever we ever did a business or we ever did anything, it didn't matter how much 
you would try and do the right thing, you're always screwed. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. And that's when, you know, things are very, very wrong. If you could explain law in your terms, what would you say? What would you say law truly is? It's knowing right from wrong. Right. It's, it's listening because I think that law in general is natural law. And the law of the nature. Highest, that is the highest level. And and there is a natural way that God sent set the world. Mm -hmm. And it's perfect. Even even when things don't feel right, he there is a, something behind it that's going to yeah. get you to the next level. Yeah. And and you have to you have to listen to that. And what happened over time is when they brought in the education system in the, the school system that we know today, they took that away from the children. Yeah. They, they, they spent, the children spend more time learning authority than listening to their heart and their gut instinct. Yeah. They're not allowed to. They're not allowed, absolutely. They, they're very, they taught from a very young age to go against their own rational thinking their yeah. own logic and their own common senses. So they yeah. lose the ability to listen to their inner inner child, inner self, yeah. inner abilities, because yeah. from day dot you're told, well, no, that's not right. And when children ask, well, why? Well, because we said, because that's, you know. Mistake. I never, yeah. I never did that with my kids. Um, yeah. So I think we need to bring that back to mm -hmm. allow for children to to learn from their mistakes depending on which you know <laughs> there's certain mm -hmm. mistakes yep. you can't afford afford to to let them experience but in general you know in the past law was i think natural law was taught uh to children and pair and i have a very different way of thinking where i know a lot of people will say children have a certain um stages where their brain can cope with emotionally and psychologically but I think we underestimate them mm, their ability to absorb with the the yeah. most important stuff yeah. and they're yeah absolutely and they are our future at the end yeah. of the day they are our future and one of the the worst thing that 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 really hit me I think when the penny dropped was when we were having to to be told in order to travel you have to jab yourself yeah in yeah. order to go to school you need to uh, put something up your nose which you don't yeah. know what's inside there um when i i actually tested them all out and saw Excellent. for myself um we, we were in shock we we, yeah. we tested the stuff what you know all these tests the pcrs and seeing what was coming out we we recorded it and we we Did were you? really in cuz i have a a very um what's it called i need to see for myself inquisitive everything. mind a very, very inquisitive yeah mind. my mind too i ha i have to know yeah i have to see it yeah uh, which is good which is why we're here now because we yeah. we're not believing you know, just, okay, yeah, we've been told this, that's it. We want to see and hear and for ourselves yes. as much as, as possible, yes. you know. And, and I know that when, whatever, if I'm not meant to know something now, I sort of let it go and I say, I'm going to find out, you know, I will be shown when yeah. I'm supposed to. When the time's to. right, yeah. When the time's yeah. right. So I'm pretty relaxed with everything. It's Did you experience time. any um anxiety fear or anything when you kind of started waking up did you go through the process of oh my god you know what's uh, what the, the reality i'm thinking of what... because i think yes i think it was the first i think the first one of the first things that sort of scared me was when they were showing how when you if if they were going when they were going to do the jobs you know the, the that uh, everyone's going to be connected to the networks yeah yeah um, I the cloud think yeah really, the cloud that really shook me up um I do you believe that do i believe that that can happen yeah i mean i believe it i, I absolutely it believe is. it yeah. yeah i mean i'm i'm observing things and yes i do yes yeah. i do i've i've seen too many things yes i have i'm, I'm i watch from the side um i see people changed 
a lot of people change uh, personalities. They're also yeah. very afraid. Um, yeah. And I do see a, a big divide. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of the, these PCR tests were in order to uh, destroy the pineal gland. Oh, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I saw a doctor a long time and she, she was showing how it goes in into um, an area here. Yeah. And goes into the brain. And and I see that in a lot of people who and there's some people that have taken the jab and who have awake, uh, you know, awoke, awakened, if I can say it correctly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're struggling to understand certain things that they would like to understand. I can yeah, see the yeah. struggle. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just looking at my laptop. So carry on. Um, so oh, yes. So here. So so I thought when when I could see. I mean, I'm not a massive traveller, but I I want to be. And and I held back. I held back because I wasn't going to be told what to yeah. do with my body. And I yeah. knew that there will be an end at some point. Everything mm -hmm. is a cycle. Nothing remains the same. Um. So I held on, and okay. but I thought my my kids and our future children cannot yep. live in such a world no so, no absolutely not so i carried on investigating and sort of i've ended up in the most incredible freedom movement um i'm very very lucky i mean i feel like i've been watched over um and guided um and I can I hear some crackling. Say, can yes. can you hear some crackling? I can hear crackling as well. Can you hear it now? Sorry, guys. I do hear it. Is that better? Yes, at the moment it is, yeah. Oh. Technology, no, it's not. It keeps coming and going. It is, and my phone is very hot. Is it plugged in? No, no, no. It was plugged in, and I took it out. Oh, how, yeah. How, Okay, so let's. Uh... No, it's so I, still I find. Yeah, it is crackling. I wonder if I take it away from somewhere. We'll it's carry on. fine. Are you next to the laptop? Is your phone next to the laptop? Next to a computer. Let me see if I'm. Oh, there you away. go. That's better. That it stop. seems. To... Okay, so I'm moving. Is it away. better, guys? Okay. Okay. So, so that then brought you on to. Uh, what a lot of us have experienced, um, wanting to make a change, wanting to fight the yes. system. And uh, because you probably, like everybody, have realised that the system's not there for us, it's there for them. Um, now I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, not having any luck. There you go. Yeah, I can hear you. I think it's when you put your, if you put your phone down. Right. Let me see, because I want to put it in a way that it's going to hold. And it's not going to cause trouble. Let me see. That, Is that any better? That Is seems that better? better. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So, so yes, so I, I, um, I started looking for freedom because at the end of the day, um, I'm not going to be locked down. I'm not going to be told yep. what to do with my body. Uh, yeah. No one's going to tell me what to do with my children. Yeah. Um, and they need a better future. It's it's very simple. You don't yeah. need to complicate it too much. No. Uh, absolutely. Life is simple, and who complicated it is the system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I ended up because I'm inquisitive. I was sent a video from um, a very quick video, mm. and I. Who is this guy talking? And it turns out one of the, the biggest leaders who is teaching people to become state nationals in America, which means they're gaining back their sovereignty and they're becoming free because there are parallel worlds running. Right. Literally parallel worlds where mm. we thought we are. For example, I'm speaking to Nina, uh, to Laura Nina. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Sorry, I'm talking to Laura. Right. Nina. Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, and everything that's happened over time is through our paperwork. Yeah. Um. So while Laura, who was given a soul to be to become a, a girl and a woman, 
very, very quickly did the system create another Laura. Mm -hmm. Laura Nina. Yep. And even your parents would not necessarily have known. They would just naturally think that, you know, you say, what's your daughter's name? Oh, well, she's Laura. If it's Nina, it's your, uh, yeah. if it's your maiden name, which, whichever it is. Yeah. Uh, and they'll carry on living and teaching you that that's how life is. And, and we just naturally agree. Yeah. You know what I was thinking last night, actually? I was thinking it's the legal fiction. It's the, the straw man legal fiction title, yes. uh, which we've had conversations mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, uh, many people. And some have said, you know, uh, we need the legal fiction to be able to contract uh, you things can like do that. that. Yeah. So, but, it, so it, yeah I'm gone. but it's funny how, as you say, it's a fake uh character uh not even a character it's it's a it's a piece of it's paper it's a fake... transmitting, transmitting utility or a yeah person. and actually it still lives on after you die because and i was thinking this last night isn't it funny how we we die but our legal fiction still lives on because they still tax you after your death absolutely yeah and inheritance tax you can't take it from that legal fiction even though it belonged to the man or the woman, but the legal fiction can still be used as. Um, do you know? Do you know why they why they can do that? Because th there is a maxim in law. Do you know what a maxim is? Yeah. So so it's like it's just been something that's been accepted by law. You you can't overturn it. And there yep. is a maxim in law that he who creates he controls. Yeah, and yep. so we didn't create the birth certificate, someone yep. else did. So they can do whatever they want with that, mm -hmm. and that's also why, when we accept that as if we are one and the same, they can do whatever they want with us, too. With us, absolutely. I, I, yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. So, you met, you went down to uh, you got sent a video of a, an American guy who's fighting the system and we're in a sort of parallel uh, universe, if you like. So Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I, I started uh, looking into this guy and listening to all his videos and I started to, to understand myself right. that we, we cannot say that we stand under common law only. Yep. We need to begin to control the legal fiction mm -hmm. we so, have to take control of control. that paperwork it's all documentation it's all through affidavits it's right. through all through signing this affidavit under the penalty of perjury because it's extremely serious anything anything that you make claim to and there yep. is a proper process and a procedure that the americans have worked on for between 40 to 50 years to get to the, the the estate of which our birth certificate is based on, mm -hmm. because right. that estate, they they basically when when you go and re when your parents register your name, mm -hmm. the registrar is your first trustee. Right. So this is all under what's called trust law. Yep. Yep. There is a whole lawful and legal process to get there and i was right. on that mission because if someone's telling me that that uh, you know we have uh, an act called the sestwick v act and the trust created based on that for every single one of us and that they're making money on our backs while making us slaves at the same time i want to mm. understand how it works mm -hmm. why it works and who's playing with the strings? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I, I basically that's all I do mm -hmm. all day, every day for 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 very long time now, and mm -hmm. I've got to the point where I understand the end game. And I can say the word "understand" with you because you're not my authority. No, <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah. So if you I could, you, you... understand. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Because I'm talking to you in proper, the English in proper English, yeah, not legalese. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, this is really interesting because it's actually quite um, <clears throat> quite a controversial subject because there are people that don't believe in what you're saying, whereas to me it makes absolute sense. And if I put it in my understanding, my comprehension is, as you say, we've been registered into the corporation of the country through our birth certificates. Yeah. So our birth certificates act like a contract to the system. It, it is. It and is. it takes away our free inalienable, some people say in... Una, you can say inalienable or you can say unalienable. Una, yeah. So it, it takes away our natural rights. And yes. therefore, I look at this like a business and, I, and, and people uh, think is. I'm crazy but when you go and you sign a, a contract with your workplace uh you get a job you have to sign a contract and while you're working for this company you will abide by these rules and we will give you these privileges right so you are absolutely correct it is a business except for that you didn't know that you're i partner. didn't know that's it yep that's i had no idea that's wrong here because they're actually very good business managers and money makers yeah. Even if it's digital or fiat, whichever, right. they're still doing something that, that actually you can benefit because you are the beneficiary to it. So so oh. it is under trust law. They created a trust. In America, they call it the Public Charitable Trust, and they set right. it up in 1933. In England um, and all around the world, I think they're called uh, a foreign situs trust. Um, and so, so it, in essence, the way it works is you are the co-beneficiary, sorry, the co-trustee, yep. the co-beneficiary, yep. and the only signatory to access that trust. Now, Ken, for the record, just explain what you what you've learned as to what the trust is because people think there's a massive pot of gold at the end of it and they're going to tap into all this money and live happily ever after like the right you know the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow what is the trust so the trust actually is where they're they've done what's called a, a double uh, bookkeeping where they've created you to become a debtor and also the creditor and there is what they, the, the International Monetary Fund, and this is how it was put to me many, many times. When, when a bank wants money, let's say you want your, your, your mortgage. Yeah. When you go and sign for a mortgage, the International Monetary Fund will provide the banks with 10 times the mortgage. Yeah. And you don't know that it's all, been signed at the back and you don't know what's been going on so and they carry on to make money they actually make money on the uh, bonds market it is a bond your documents are bonds everything is a bond your your passport is a bond your birth certificate is a bond your driving license is a bond your number plates are a bond hmm. um nice. your application for a university course or college is a bond every single move you make becomes a bond i have to get the charges so hold on yep that's fine um, so there is so have you have you have you found proof that it's a bond have you seen it yes, for yourself yes, yes. <clears throat> there are not just me many many others many right i'm not the because only one so there's, there's people that say there's no proof of this. We've not been shown any evidence that it's a bond. So. Okay. Well, very easy to do if they actually open up the dictionaries, the legal dictionaries, and start to look at all the terminologies, they're going to find out. Because even the passport, I found three terminologies that tell me that that in itself is a bond. Right. Okay. Could you um, share that with us? Uh, one would be called date of issue. You right. think that date of issue is the date that it was given to you? It's not. 
it's the date where it, a date of issue in legal terms means that it's um, a, a, an instrument, a financial instrument created. Um, the word authorized representative also. Um, there is the bearer. If you look at the front of your passport, yeah, it, it will say the bearer of this. Yeah, the bearer in legal terms in banking law means that there is money being made. It's another instrument, right? So, so all the way I did it because I wanted, like you said, proof. Yep. I mean, I could spend three days looking for a word. I, I, because it, it really would niggle at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, and I found many, many words. I have to say something which, which I think is important for everyone to understand. Uh, when we, a lot of people do get the play on words. I, I've been listening, but even them, I've noticed they still call themselves residents. Yeah. And they still call themselves citizens. Yeah. And there is a problem there because it still means that someone else has authority of, over you because mm -hmm. the word resident comes from, from Latin with the word, with the left R E S a res. Now, if you have the res from the word resident, because everything yep. comes from Latin, yep. it means that you have no rights to any property or ownership of property. Interesting. So you, a lot of good people who are working, uh, saying we we are actually on the land and common law and all that, yeah. they're, they're kind of not helping themselves by calling themselves residents or we want to help residents. Because yeah. it, it sort of it hurts me when I listen to it and I'm thinking, oh, please, I know you're trying to help, but, you know, but, yeah. is, it, you know and the same with citizen. Citizen means uh, means a municipal servant. Yeah, there is a whole history to to that meaning, so we cannot be municipal servants. We cannot be a resident, and we can't be a person because everybody knows that person is a dead entity. Yeah, and yeah. So this is That's where we true. start. Okay. This is really you knowing the terminologies, looking in the dictionary in the Black's Law Dictionary. There are different. Um, there's about 11 editions, but yeah. the main ones are four and six. And here and there you will find extra good information. Right. I'm just making notes. Yeah. 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 So now what interested me in something you said, which sometimes, you know, as you talk to people, different little pennies drop and you think, oh, I like that. So when you become employed and you sign the contract, you can work your way up the ladder to a higher job and you can eventually become a partner or, you know, a manager or whatever, which is what you kind of said about um, our birth certificate is that we can possibly become, we can become in charge of our birth certificates. We can become partners yes. 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 to what we've been entered into. Yes. So the, the end game really is that, um, and this is what they're doing abroad and they're, they're, they are claiming um, but what's but it takes it's not hard but it is a process people need lots of patience and uh, and uh, part of that process is sometimes coming up against the other side where the people who are working you know for uh, for the other side don't know the real law yeah and so it's up to us to learn certain laws how to stand our ground in a peaceful mm -hmm. way yeah so um i did a lot of comparisons you know in america they have the declaration of independence and they have other parchments and in england we don't have that we mm. have the magna carta and yep. we have the bill of rights but superior I statues yes but they're also insufficient yeah so because there is a hierarchy of law and you have natural mm. law, universal law. The other one is um, uh, tr our treaties. People okay. have to look into all the treaties because they are supreme law of the land. Very, very important to know. Right. That. So, um, 
a lot of people don't like the United Nations because we know many things. But at the same time, they have a duty and they did do it to within United Nations treaties to uphold the rule of law. So I suggest people look on the um, there are two main ones. Yep. Which is the uh, the declaration. Uh, was it the Declaration of uh, Human Rights that the, the main one, the Charter, and then there is the, the main. The other one is the Covenant of Civil and Political Rights. Right. It is a very very important document because it will help people to once you read it and read it properly, you will see that one of the first articles is the right to self-determination. Yep, absolutely. Um, we've, got, we've got someone saying that uh, we have 17 documents that make up our constitution. USA got its law from us. The thing is, in my understanding of my research, uh, we haven't got a, an affirmed constitution. We didn't no. actually create a fixed constitution like the Americans did, did, did we? Correct. There isn't, but you. this is where you have to go uh, this is where my time also went, where you go, you keep going as far back as possible. Um, and when you look into Britain, the land mm. itself, uh, when it was taken initially, the uh, Brutus actually recognized that everybody was sovereign. Mm. So when, you know, so when the land was, was um, with indigenous they weren't indigenous but they came and took over but they didn't they didn't conquer the land and later on it was stolen because everybody mm. was free mm. and again if you look back in biblical times i mean at the end of the day if god gave the the land the air and the water to man he didn't give mm. it to a person he gave it mm. to man and god doesn't recognize person in the bible no. He doesn't know. And he and he says it is for your heirs, for your your children, and it's forever. And there is about 11, 11 scriptures in there to state that these lands are for man forever and for their children and their children and their further. And this is what uh, that David Strait speaks about. Uh, yes. He says that the, the, the Bible is a trust document. A trust indenture. And, yeah, uh, there is a, 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 an incredible, incredible man which I am I am studying now because one of the ways to get to to get to that trust because the the trust if you actually once you go through the entire process you'll be so free that the trust is just um, an icing on the cake. Mm. You will have your freedom. You will not have penalties for anything. You will not have. You will have your own land. You will have your own, um, you, you, you know, your cars, your conveyances. The, the titles to that are going to be yours. Um, this is the process you'll be able to protect your, your kids. Um, the process is, is, is a beautiful, beautiful process. But in the meantime, while in America, they found the way, they created what called land patents. And yep. people are now claiming these land patents. Um, this... Um, gentleman called ron gibson in, yeah i'm telling you he's my my hero my new hero this guy yeah he studied for 45 years land law land patents water law and what i'm looking to do here is to find the same kind of thing a way for people to own their land again because that's how they take all your property from mortgages you know if you can't pay the mortgage to take your property but you never owned the land mm -hmm. and and is he having success in owning land in america absolutely yes yes and yes. is it does has anyone had success here in the uk do you know no and this is what this is the only thing that's missing from this process to try to, to pass on to here Everything else is done. So again, I, I look back and you have to look back in history and you look also on uh, how they managed to do it in America and what was done to, to cause all the issues. So so in America, they had 
um, w when they finished the Revolutionary War and they got their independence, they the, the new government, Washington, they gave all the land and they created land patents. And they were given all these meets and bounds. And, and so then within that, it says, right, this is for you, for your heirs forever and ever. Okay. Mm. Uh, in England, they didn't do that. And what happened was in America is when they incorporated America, in, I think it was in 1871, the government then created an extra layer. Uh, you have to imagine as a superimposed extra layer of plastic with postcodes mm, mm. And then a, a military started, codes and they started making everything into real estate and real estate when you buy real estate it's a commercial it's not on the land it's commerce yeah and that's how they take everybody's property away there so yeah. people are now going back and finding who owned the original land because there's two offices which they didn't tell them about. One one office they didn't tell them, and that one office is about the land. And right. That's under common law. So people are going back, <clears throat> and I think this is a major subject for England, because until we get back that ownership of land wholeheartedly, you won't be able to get to that trust either, but you also won't get full, full freedom. Right, okay. In order to get... <clears throat> In order to get your full freedom, you need to own the land or at least have that in your name. So because then when you own the land, you, you, you make that your country, if you like. It, it's, yes. It's yours. You, it's a, it's a, you, it's a different you, jurisdiction. And also land, remember, it's, it's the, the um, wealth comes from land, which is yeah. why they all wanted to take it away from us. Yeah, it has the minerals, and yeah. that's you know you can have your clean water with your own land. Mm. So I think this is the missing link, mm. and I think a lot of people need to sort of start to work on getting those. They call it allodial type. They, it's not actually allodial titles. This is another mistake that was right. pointed out. Everyone says, "Can you get an allodial title?" Um, and at one point I said yes, but then I, I learned some more and I found it's allodial right. Right. Because an allodial means you're the king, you're the sovereign. And if oh, God yeah. gave you sovereignty via your creation, then that's your right. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any case numbers that people can research where in America they're having success in uh, the lands? Um, I don't have, I know, um, well, I'm in contact with the people who are also working towards it. Um, I can see if, I don't know, I can actually make some contacts and see yeah, if I yeah. get a response. That would be good. Um, because what I'm just looking to, uh, what I'm looking at is how do we do it here? Do we go back, back in time, and cr we can also come together and create if they manage to create their own um, sort of a, a declaration of uh, independence, mm. you know, then and then by virtue of that, manage to give out these parcels of land which are owed to people. Mm. Um, if we can do something on the same same level, I mean, when you had the, um, I was thinking about the coronation, <clears throat> and it hit me that. When, again, looking through the declaration in England, there was the Declaration of Rights. Mm. And um, that in itself was a new contract. And I think that every time if, if King Charles, whatever you want to call him. Sausage fingers. Whatever it is. He, he is doing some form of an oath, even if it's for show. It is, it is for us to stand up and say, actually... I didn't ask for this. Yeah. Um, I'm not part of it. Mm. And within the one of the first documents that you would write, it's called an affidavit of repudiation and mm. revocation of corporate citizenship. This is wow. one of our first, first documents to change our status. 
Love it. And it's it, because you're not saying I'm giving up um, being British or I'm giving up whatever country I'm living in. I'm giving yeah. up being part of a corporate citizenship because of this, that, that, and the other lie, all the lies put together. This mm. is how being part of it has affected my life um, and our family. And, and it's, um, it's, it's an, a proper affidavit and it has to be done correctly, has to be recorded correctly, had it have to be filed in the right way mm. in mm. order for it to become law. And you can look on the United Nations declaration on it actually to see that they recognize that it has to be, that, that if you choose to, to live in a certain way that it has to be adhered to and respected. Absolutely. Um, so there was something I was gonna say, uh, we have our own Bill of Rights, which there's came from the Declaration of Rights as part of our English. Yeah, the Bill of Rights is the superior statues make up part of the British constitution, but there's no actual sort of constitution like no. there is in America. I mean, That's we the could difference. Create one. Yeah, I which I think is we can't. I think Graham Moore for uh, I think he's called Daddy Dragon. I think he's trying to bring back the British Constitution, but um there was never anything fixed as such. But no. it but the Constitution makes up a whole load of superior laws and statutes, if you like, and that creates our constitution. So I was funnily enough looking at the Magna Carta and the wording within it as well. And one of the problems I find with as much as it's useful and you can use it in many ways, if you're going to try and claim your land free of, free of taxes, you, you have to either rewrite something or declare something else of your own because, because it was only given to barons and it was only given to barons as what's called a fief in exchange for services, right. which is again in exchange for today's taxes, yep. which means you're not free. No, no, because you're fully yeah. free. Yeah, you're not, you're not you're not kind of living under your, you, you know, uh, inalienable rights. You're still living under a man-made yeah. uh, declaration. What groups in America are you working with, Kim? Um, I'm with the American State National with David Strait and Bobby Lawrence. Excellent. They are incredible, in, um, incredible mentors. Um, the people I work with, all the admins uh, that work with them, um, I'm surprised that David Strait's still alive. I'll be yeah, honest. So they're, they're, um, well, they're holding on today. His wife has she she's been held uh, captive since she was put in a solitary confinement for 19 days. And today they have they they bring her in. They're trying to. It's in Texas, and he called out for people to sort of literally flood the courts. Why did they? Why are they holding his wife? So. They were, she was trapped into, she was dealing with something with her ex-husband. Mm. And when she was dealing with him and she was leaving, leaving the court to finish her, her issues, they, they railroaded her and then they just arrested her for something that was closed back in 2015. They right. changed the word discharge yep. to, uh, to dismissed and they reopened. And literally just took her then. And everybody's up in arms now. And this is a problem we've got with the court system. And the courts, uh, you know, they, as far as I'm concerned, are completely and utterly uh, corrupt and infiltrated like a, an absolute spreading cancer. Yes. And it's going to be so hard to um, bring back the, you know, the rule of law as it should be. Uh, but we have to keep trying, fighting and doing it because obviously we do want some kind of... Um, I don't even know what, what to say. You know, you want some kind of justice when you're seeking justice. Yes. But you're not getting it against, you know, the, the corporations or, or people with money. You're, you're, no, you, you have only... to take it. It's, mm. it's at a point where we need to take it for ourselves collectively and individually. So, for example, the process that we do is an individual process because we have to learn to stand 
it, it, you have you do a status correction which a lot of people have heard of but they haven't completed it correctly or, or finished it and they don't know what to yep. do with the paperwork and they don't understand what what the end game is how the judge is looking at you um and and at the end of the day when they are in court they are adjudicating three jurisdictions and they try and get rid of two very very yep. quickly so uh, it was interesting you know it's all the play on words you know you you come out of the womb you're in the water uh, my son had the good one he had the semen one he he so he saw he says actually think of the word see men yeah absolutely you don't even realize at to to what level it they goes thought of and, and to what yep. they thought of um and you just look at it in that way and you start to understand what is really going on um and the end game really is to control all three jurisdictions which mm. you can people have worked it out they have been in front of pro you have to go to a probate judge right the probate judge is actually at the end of the day is your business partner right rather than a judge adjudicating anything by the time you finish this entire process it's already it's already been decided that you have your freedom for this and for that and for the other but to get to the trust you need to show competency because part of it is actually to help humanity you have to put a plan in to help part of that finances how to turn around and to put some of that money towards changing for example the lights mm. changing whatever you need whatever humanity does need so it's not a selfish thing it's not so, a gold, it's not a lottery ticket right so what what you're saying makes sense to me so what you're saying is that uh, everything's been corrupted but in amongst all this corruption we've got uh, a right to process and you can only go and do that process if you can prove to them that you're not an infant you're not a child and that you will use it wisely yeah. uh, to share and support yes not just yourself but people around you if you like absolutely that you have to help uh, and not everybody can get through this process because they have um some will have mental issues some will have emotional issues others will have physical problems uh, to no fault of their own so it's for us as their family to help them yep and mm. and um at the same time uh, you mentioned the word infant <clears throat> yep i'm going to pick on that because Please. um you, when they say you, you until you get to that minor estate you are regarded as a minor as new, yeah by legal terms and everything I say, I really have looked up. Otherwise, I won't open my mouth. If I don't no, know that's something, good. I'm going to tell you, look, I haven't been there. I haven't um, seen it enough to, to judge. Yeah. But I, I check this out. You are regarded as a minor up until you get to that estate. Right. And that's also why they can do what they want with you, because they are regarded as your parents via a doctrine called Parents Patriae. Uh, yeah, and in local parientes, and yeah. so they have assumed parental rights over, over you. you, and you could I've, be ninety years old. Yeah, I've watched quite a bit of David Strait stuff, and I actually yes. found him so interesting, incredible, um, incredible. But one question: people are saying here, um, first of all, M, why do we have to prove? that to them who gives them authority over us well that was again um through the birth certificate being registered into their system with without realizing giving them authority so it's yeah. down to us now uh from my understanding in our conversation here it's down to us to claim that authority back but we have to prove that we are responsible yes, enough we're not going to throw the money away we're not going to just waste it yeah and, and it's not a lottery ticket exactly it's now deal. it's like uh, when you watch the superhero film Spider-Man and he says, you know, with great powers comes great responsibility. And a lot of us are not ready to take on that that responsibility because this is how we've been 
conditioned uh, yes. and treated to be, um, you know, to not be responsible. And so that's what we need to now establish in our journey. Yeah. Are we responsible enough? Are we uh, mentally mature enough uh, to take on this great responsibility and share it with the right people? Um, the other thing that I was going to say, which is completely gone. Um, so David Strait, that's right. Um, people are saying this is not American and it's not American law. This is not America. But aren't we all America under the British bar system? So the Americans are being run by the bar uh, association. And you check and I, that. It really doesn't matter with America. The principles always remain the same. You just have to go back to the root. God gave you this land. He gave yeah. you the, the, the air that you breathe. I mean, you wouldn't yeah. exist if you didn't if you didn't have that that air, if you didn't have that oxygen. He's the one yeah. that's creating it or some other entity, whatever it is. A divine a, creator. A divine creator. We exist because of something else. And no one can take that away from us. And the only people that created these divisions, these boundaries of countries, are is man. Yeah. yeah. You, you, can, you, you really don't. I mean, you have to go back to what is the actual sovereign name i mean I, I looked back again on on the the world because i was looking at the original names of the countries to discover how gaul used to be part of france it's it what now is france italy spain um and it actually was called gaul and it was in a completely different vicinity to, it's not just france mm -hmm. so man created these divisions and these divisions are corporations. When yep. you're traveling and you're, when you're buying a ticket on a plane, you're not traveling just country to country. You're, you're traveling, you're buying a ticket from a corporation called United Kingdom of Great Britain, because actually it's Britain that's the landmass. And you're going to Spain, which is another corporation rather than Iberia Peninsula, which was the original name for Spain and a few other areas. Right, right. So your, your mindset is very important. Mm. How far into this process of you are you at? Uh, I'm, I would say I'm halfway because uh, I started from a different, in a different way. I actually have my own number plates and I've let all the, cor you know, correct, uh, corporate authorities know um, I have I've created my own extra documentation that if I'm stopped I don't have to say much it's just this is the this is the hierarchy of law this is what's been created this is what I stand on these are my rights I don't have privileges I have rights and they're God-given mm. mm. and I stand by that and I don't have any problems because of that Right. So, um, are your are your I've been are your private June. plates registered? No, they're my own. No, they're not registered. No, the, the the DVLA know what my number plates are. Right. Okay. And there is another way to do it, which I'm I'm just holding on just a little bit, but you, everyone will know this in the future, of mm -hmm. actually getting hold of the original. What's it's called a manufacturing certificate of origin which yep. a lot of people know of. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to get hold of, but I have now the contact for the for for people who actually have the the rights to actually get that deregistered even within the system. Right. Um, so it's all about just correcting errors, correcting your your status both in in uh, your psyche your um emotionally you really need to understand who you are mm. and i think that's your biggest fight I, th I think the psychological side is the biggest fight yeah Every once you've understood yourself and you really get who you are and you get what your rights are you're able to then stand in your own skin and speak correctly to the other side 
mm. and then say, look, there's been a grave error over years. I am correcting it. And it's for you to now uh, adhere to that and to now accept it. And, and it does work. It definitely works. So can I just ask you, because I had uh, a bit of a problem uh, when it came to finding out about insurance for your car. So if you um, are not registered with the DVLA, apparently you can't get car insurance. And Okay, you... so number one, you don't actually need car insurance, but we do it because we are responsible. And yep. this is where the lawful side is. We don't need to be told what is the right thing to do to make someone whole, you know, if you have an accident or something happens. Yeah. So um, I use, I have an other documentation that was created for me last year where you, you, you're you splitting your name, you're letting the authorities know, and there is a way to use, you use your bond and your birth certificate uh, number and all these things to let the authorities know, look, um, if anything happens, I'm giving you authority as X, Y, Z to take out from my bond the money to make someone whole. I didn't make the documents on that one. Somebody else did. And again, there was another process to it. And uh, do we know if they stand? Do we know if these documents actually stand? The, the way it's done, again, when you write um, certain documents and you give them uh, also as affidavits and you, you give somebody a um, certain time frame of which to argue or rebut it, if they don't rebut it, then it becomes law. It, it goes into law and it is accepted. And it means that by acquiescence, it is accepted by their silence. Um, and I can tell you from my personal experience, and I've, I've said, me and, me and my partner, my husband, we've been since June going around with these, with two different um, conveyances, um, and we're fine. And we've been in front of, of the challenges, and we've been in front of the, the, you know, the tests. And I'm telling you, it passes. <laughs> it passes. Passes. So what do you do now to travel? Do you travel on your uh, passport or have you mastered uh, the passport as well? Interesting you should ask. So I would like to travel. I haven't traveled in years and I really held on because of COVID and what I said. There's three ways you can do it. There, I, I've created my own documents based on m me standing in my own skin. And, um, you know, again, hierarchy of law. You know, they also found that you that uh, um, God's signature, you know, is actually embedded in our DNA. Interesting. It was it was a scientist blueprint uh, in Israel yeah. who actually found it under a, a microscope, a computer, and a microscope. It was the most yeah. incredible thing. I think I saw that. It was very yeah, very interesting. <clears throat> so I I created um, my own file of standing my ground um my own hierarchy and showing where they where they actually stand i looked up into all the airports how they function all the corporations within the airports who owns what where it comes from so again it's the psychological side there is another way of doing it they're doing in australia in australia they've been teaching people um to that it's via their signature <clears throat> Sorry, and to, because you're changing your signature to be the creditor rather than the debtor, and you write all these all rights reserved and without print, that you can actually just carry on using your passport that way. Um, but they don't have any right to it because you've taken but, ownership in that. But way. you still have to, <clears throat> you still have to apply for the passport. So is there a way <laughs> that? Uh, so so what you're saying is. You have to apply for these things, but you apply for them in a different way. In a different way, as and, the beneficiary, yeah. beneficiary, not the yes. creditor. But but I would never do that until I did that first document, which I've told you about, the affidavit of repudiation. Right. That and, is your most important piece of paper 
that you can actually then send in to um, Secretary of State and you let them know who you are, what you know, and you wait for them to actually rebut those arguments with their authorities. And they don't. They don't. So, um, so any, people are, are obviously going to ask. So you've got a process for this, haven't you? That yes. you can help people. Yes. Yeah, so I've spent a lot of my time adapting, like the la the other, you know, lady or, or gentleman said, we are not America. But the yeah. principles remain the same. And yeah. what you can do is you look up the equivalent, the equivalents. Uh, you know, what I did was I sent in, um, very interestingly, I actually sent in my own blood DNA with my own vital check uh, saying, hey, I'm alive to the coroner's yeah. office. Yeah. And those are things that you can, they're, they're conscious things that you need to do to sort of state your claim. Right. Okay. So, important. right. Okay. So, like a live life, do you have to do a live life claim? Yes, but it's it's you need to understand the difference between being alive and being living. You have to have been found alive, like a salvage, like someone's found you. Because remember, everything is maritime. Right. You're, you you have to think that you're living in the sea. You're living in the water at this point until you start to to what what claim your island you have to let right. them know that there is an island that there is you know dry land right and okay all your documentation that you will be building is that island it's really sad that you have to go through all this process to to be to be you you to, to be a uh, um to be given sort of like um Oh, uh, you know, to be able to be given the freedom to do and travel. But and you're be... not being given the freedom. You're you're taking it back. Taking now. it back. And um, it's not free to be free. Right. You have to work at it. Yep. And you have to want it more than anything. And you need to know why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. If you're doing right. it for the pot of gold at the end well while you're going it, 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 first of all you're not going to get it because no. your mindset wouldn't be in the right place mm. um but by the time you actually get to it like i said it's the icing on the cake you'll have so many other newfound freedoms that that you you're going i can tell you that when i was taking my my oh. um automobile around the first few weeks i was very nervous yeah i can imagine you, and I, especially my, if it's worth something i'm telling you my leg was shaking at the pedal while i was seeing <laughs> if i saw police behind me they're right behind me and i'm like oh my god they're gonna stop me how am i gonna deal with it and i didn't have to deal with it i was very surprised um but over time i think it took me about six weeks yep to, to start to feel the stress in my chest, the pain in my chest start to relieve. And right. that's when you start to sort of look up and say, hey, I am actually free. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got groups um, that, I've got a hearing on now. You've got groups, have you, that on Telegram, which... Uh, I sort of... Feed information which I've applied between the principles that have come from America, but together with the British history, in order for people to understand how to combine them, and right. also where to look. You know, I have where to start looking, so that they they understand what they're doing. There's no point in you doing any document or any paperwork if you don't understand what it's about. Yeah, and so you're you're yeah because it's it, it, you need to understand it to understand it. Yes, and you need to be able to know what to say if you're facing a corporate authority. You have yeah. to know what you're going to say, and what's giving you the strength to say it. 
So your group on Telegram is called Soul Connection and British State Nationals. Yeah, if it's, at it's the end of this live... With an, S, uh, with an S at the end. Double N, E, C, T, I, O, N, S. What we'll do is at the end of this live, if you can send me the links, then I'll put them onto this live at the top. So people, please look back once I've... At the moment, I've got to be completed. Once I update it... Uh, then I'll put the links on there. Um, right, so all the information is able to be accessed in these groups for people to take away and carry on their yes. self. Yes. And if they need any help or advice along the way, yes. everything should, is in your group. Yes, yeah, yeah. We have, um, I have... I mean, I really just started it initially because um, I wanted to connect with people, you know, and, and to because I do believe that this is a soul connection. I genuinely feel it. I can see it because yep. you can be part of a physical family and you don't feel connected to them. Yeah. And, and because you can see that you're thinking differently. Yeah. But here you can meet people that you, you've never met before, but you have an instant click, an ins, you know, and, and it works. It, and it's yeah. very warm. We've built a really warm group. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone can put their own help for each other. You know, somebody may have uh, discovered something that someone else hasn't, and you can help them. You can, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. what it's for. The is it a private group? No, this one is, is open. The Soul Connections right. is open. The British State National one is more for people who want to go through the process um, and don't only want information about uh, what's going on in the world only. Because sometimes people will throw in things that are happening around the world and that's okay because I'm not going to stop them from expressing themselves. But that's not really what you want in that group. That's not what that group's about. No, but I'm, I'm equally, it, it depends if somebody, if they know to, you know, somebody wants to say something specific is happening that is relevant yeah. in this world. And it's to warn people, you know, for example, they had a warning about APL. Oh you my know, God! Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm not going to shut someone down because they're warning other people to help them. Yeah, it's not part of the British state national um, idea. Yeah, but if they want to put it on the soul connections in order to help each other to to warn each other of something, but I don't like fear mongering. I think yep. it's just as bad. A lot of the, the groups out there they also have a lot of fear mongering, um, although the, the truths. Yep, yep. But I don't it's, I think it's, it's not your vision. Exists. Yeah, yeah. And my vision is to to encourage people to actually have hope mm. because there it does exist. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Right. Do we have any questions before Kim needs to go? And otherwise we could just carry on talking for hours. No, I'm looking forward to joining the group. I, I I'm I'm feeling this. Yeah. That's all I can say. I'm feeling this. I'm actually feeling this. And also, I've watched a lot of uh, David Strait. I think he's brilliant. And, um, you know, I've watched uh, Bibi Bacchus as well, some of her process. I've seen her actually. I, I actually studied with her as well. Oh, um, wow. And, um, and this is also where I found sometimes uh, the, 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 the hiccups were, well, go to the county court and do a recording there. And I'm thinking... But we don't have a county court here in England. What's the closest that I can find? Yeah. Um, and those are the kind of things I've been working on. To yeah, adapt. yeah. That's brilliant. Because there was something in David Strait's uh, talk. Let me see if I can find it, actually, where he said something about uh, the colour of law. Yes. And I was thinking, but what's the British, um, you know, Let's have a look. Well, yeah, so I've got yeah uh, here. I think I've just. I've got it here. I can... I've got it in front of me. The appearance or semblance without the substance or legal right. Misuse of power possessed by virtue of state law and made possible only because wrongdoer is clothed with the authority to state 
of state is in is action taken under color of law so it, the, again principles are the same if a, yeah if a police officer is saying he's acting under law but he's actually acting under statute he's only wearing a uniform yeah yeah and, exactly and, it, and it's okay if he's um and i've met a lot of good police policemen they're not all no you know, they're not yeah they're, then i think they're the same as everybody else they've just been taught in error yeah and they just yep. have to be re-educated as well mm, because i mm. think in essence they came to the job with some with, with something good to do they just mm. misguided so i've got here something that david Strait said when uh sending back uh letters yes. uh he said obviously <clears throat> you have 72 hours a 72 hour right of rescind which means revoke cancel or repeal and yes. what you write is you take a red pen at a 45 degree angle and this was the part where i was struggling because i was trying to look at the, the uk uh sort of equivalent um it says your offer to contract is not accepted while traveling in private in my private automobile you operate under title 18 section 241 and 242 and this is it and this is where i was this thinking right well, that's, on. this is the american side right. as a conspiracy to deprive me of my rights under the color of law and i was thinking okay. right so where do i find this in the uk term that's what I, this is what i've been working on so uh, in america again in some areas um they don't even need a license they don't even need a number plate and um, travel is regarded as a free, it's, it's only in commerce. But the 72 hours right of rescission comes under banking law. Right. Uh, contract and banking law. And so, so again, one of the things everybody needs to, to get in their head is that what we're told is being used to tell us that this is the statutes of the law is actually something else so when you're dealing with a council tax when you're dealing with anyone demanding money of you it's banking law mm. have you and dealt so with council tax rules. huh have you dealt with council tax yeah i i actually did my initial status correction with the bb backus system right and then i actually uh, went on with, and did it with the state david Strait, and i let them all know Yes, um, you know, this is who I am. I've done this, this correction, you know, fix your errors, but they will still hound you. Yeah, this is a problem we've got. So when they, <coughs> excuse me, when they carry on uh, coming for you, what, what do you do if you own property, cars, you know? So this, this, this is you, so you now hit them with a lien, a lien process. Right. The commercial lien process, which is regarded and accepted by, I think it was the Court of Appeal, and um, Michael Bernicia, Michael Obernicia, I think he actually created the perfected liens. So, so again, um, there is what's called um, equity. Equity is is regarded. You use equity when all else fails, where there is no remedy. Right, which is, yeah, yeah. So, so you, again, you can create your own remedies. There is a way out of everything, but you have mm. to study. <laughs> and people need to get the fact that there is no hard and fast um, rule. It's not a quick fix. It's not a quick pill. You need to read what I've sent out. I always send what I think is relevant. I have another lovely lady in Italy um who's doing the same thing for the europeans and wow. italy um we connected via the david Strait group because i kept asking questions and she sent me one day a message <laughs> a, a direct message kim you keep asking the same question i said because i'm not getting the answer the answer yeah <laughs> and uh we connected immediately so we help each other um i have a group in canada who are doing the same thing this is happening but people here need to get their act together and to understand petitions aren't enough. You Thank have you. To, to really know who you are and where you stand. And then we can also come together as a network yep. to put something 
for each other to to back each other up love it yeah love it so um okay brilliant um has anyone got any question um petitions don't do anything no i watched something a few days ago saying not to get a driving license because with their license you are signed up to their terms yes you are uh, hang on uh, i have to say something about that yep the reality is if you if it put yourself in a position when you're traveling abroad you travel abroad you may want to rent a car so you may still need the driving license paperwork yep. but if you reapply for it signing it in a way where you're the creditor um and and again i wouldn't do it until you did your affidavit of repudiation you can use that as your backup i i put a sign up in my in my uh, conveyance and it apparently it scares everybody off and i said i have done my affidavit of repudiation of citizenship i travel in private anyone that touches this car will get a thousand pound fine the secretary of state knows about this um and i is this is lawful and legal under the united nations i let them know i've laminated it put it on my dashboard and i'm telling you my husband has been going around they're scared they will Fantastic. not take a risk so someone just said i think that's brilliant absolutely brilliant but again like you say you've really looked into this and so people need to do their do their work due diligence yeah because um if okay. you sorry go on no no i i say say what you want to say uh if you, if someone said if you've done bb bagus's course why do you go to david well they both teach different things as well don't they you combine what you do is you take yeah so bb bagus uh was very good um initially for me to sort of set set the stage uh but again it still works there are more things within it where you're working under maritime and i believe in you know the way i take it if it works for you then great yeah it, for me i like to simplify things mm -hmm. um and i don't want to learn some too many of somebody else's codes or somebody else's thing in order to come out of a situation i like to mm. know i am kim god gave me these rights i like it, it it's a personal a decision of how i'm comfortable to stand in my own skin yeah so i'm yep. not negating that her her work is bad at all if it works for you brilliant for me it works to a point yeah yeah um i and that's it and and i know who i'm dealing with uh, in america i know the people i'm dealing with they they're very very honorable um the good people who are all looking for the same freedoms um and experiencing them absolutely fantastic um any more questions uh if don't so i think this is fantastic if you send me the links i'll put them on there i'll definitely join <laughs> definitely yeah. interested yeah to, to i'm, I'm trying more. now i'm going to be setting up a website similar to the to the american one but again adapted to the nuances in england uh the difficulties and and uh like i said i had to change it they get they get what's called a diplomatic passport that's the one um, that's the word i was looking for we should be able to travel one. like we yeah. don't so yeah. we have to create our remedy yeah um so i've had to sort of again i i will have it all up but just bear with me because i'm i'm about the only one i think that is doing this in this way and yeah, um, bless you i i have to say is the best thing i've ever done yeah <laughs> I, i can I, imagine yeah i'll never look back oh that's fantastic i'll never look back that's no. fantastic yeah. that's brilliant thank you um if people need your help can they come to you obviously through your yeah. group yeah yeah they can take they can uh, do a private message message okay. um as well if i don't respond i try and respond as quick as i can but if i don't it's literally because i'm held up either with family yeah. or or just finishing my own uh, job but i will get back i'll do my best fantastic okay do you do you have a trust have you made your own trust 
this is one of the last things you do before uh, because you have to get all what they call your ducks in a row, you know, yep. you have to get it all in order. So the trust would be at the end. There's something called a God familiar trust as well, which helps to protect your, your kids and your family. And then you do another trust and you put everything you've done. So in that trust, fantastic. Everything. Yeah. So David Strait has been doing <clears throat> some amazing work. What repercussions has he had from doing all this? I mean, you know, his wife, like you said, she's been uh, detained. Yes. I mean, it, it must be quite hard because of what he's doing for I think him. He, he's been, um, he has to be very careful. Um, also, his partner, I think, also has been sort of had to be very, very careful. It's another gentleman called Bobby Lawrence. Uh, right. he's, he's he's such a lovely man, really. Funnily enough, I ended up on a Zoom call with them without realising. I Last year, I ended up, it was 10 o'clock at night, and I thought, I'm going to listen in and see what I can learn from them. And next thing I, I know, I'm put on, and he go, Bobby Lawrence goes, right, Kim, you're on. What do you want to know? And oh, I, wow. And I thought, <laughs> it, it, but since then, um, they're sending me people from America, who have family in England. That's brilliant. So I seem to be yeah. the contact here. Yeah. Um, and the other lady is the contact in Italy. So we're all helping each other. People are doing brilliant. this in Germany, in Russia, in Peru. Um, they're doing it absolutely all over the world. Mm. They're doing exactly what I'm doing and helping others claim their sovereignty properly. Sovereign, sovereign, you are sovereign by birth. It wouldn't make a difference. But I'm talking sovereign in the eyes of of the, the other side. Yeah. The corporations. Um, what people would ask if they do this and uh, correct their status and claim their sovereignty, do they lose? Uh, so, so it's people that um, you know are on benefits for whatever reason. Do they lose so, any of that? You don't lose any of it, but you have to know, like I said, you have to understand the ins and outs of how they take the money out. Um, the best thing to do really is to find um, there are other ways of earning a living in order to, to get. It's not a good thing to be specifically on benefits. Um, I think you have to slowly come out of it. So first mm. you would claim that you are not a resident or whatever. But in order to claim benefits, you are regarded as a resident and a citizen. So you have to, again, read it, research it. Um, you have to, to understand that really taxes you do not need to pay. It's only for the fiction. And, and you, you don't have to pay your gas and electric. You don't have to pay the council. All those things kept us needing benefits mm, mm. because you can't yep. survive otherwise. But once you get rid of those and you learn a about it and you, you, you just read and listen to as many links, you'll find that you, you can work, earn your living and not pay all those taxes and actually live and pay for your food or create your food if you want to do your allotments or whatever. What if you're a pensioner and you're claiming state pension? I think I can ask somebody abroad. Uh, I can ask somebody abroad about that because I know a lot of people have asked. Some other people have um, benefits because they have maybe, you know, for physical ailments or things like mm. that. So I think that you don't lose. See, I right. always, I thought benefits is something that is yours because you are the beneficiary. So isn't no. there a way of, no? No, actually benefits that's what... is not a good thing. Um, and I actually ca came up on that uh, two days ago. Actually, to, to confer a benefit is to force something on somebody that they don't really need. Although I'm not saying people don't need a roof over their head. Yeah, yeah. I get that. And I get that we've all been put in a position where we somehow feel, you know, we need to apply for help. 
Mm. But that's mm. the cycle we need to break. And we need that help because we have to pay bills, utilities, yep. road tax, uh, all those things. But you don't need to. Mm. And that's why you slowly, slowly break away. It's not a quick fix, like I said. It takes time, yeah. It really but then, does. But then, because um, I remember David Strait, and in fact, he was the first guy that I made it very clear uh, that you take th this money comes from your trust. Yes. And so although you're not relying on benefits, you're able to tap in to your yes. trust. I think... Uh, another way to do it would be again when you use your signatures your signatures and your autographs everything you write from now on is all rights reserved mm. all rights reserved and without prejudice absolutely every signature that there's certain things you can do to protect yourself while pulling out from the system and not losing out yeah because it means yeah. that you you are pushed into a situation where you may not have food if you didn't get yeah. financial help or what you think is financial help, but it's actually your money. So you're going to always write all rights reserved below your signature. Right. And there's a way of signing. There's a way of signing. There's a way of thing. And all of it's on my, on my Telegram group. Just Telegram. roll at the back. Everything I can find to help. I throw in so um, little nuggets. Just scroll at the back on the links. Scroll on the pictures on the media. Scroll on the um, mainly files and links. Okay, perfect. It's sort right. Of, yeah. I'm going to. Uh, any more questions before we go? Um, I'm sure there's like Kim said. You have to do your own sort of process. Yes. Learn. Yes. Uh, I'll put the links to the Telegram at yeah. the end. Uh, you have to learn for yourself so yes. you uh, understand it. How do you identify Kim? Oh, me? Um, mm. Kim of the house of Jan. Okay. Of the house. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's it, really. That's all. I, there's no I, more I questions. I want to say one more thing before we go. It is very important. Every process you take on board, it, it doesn't matter what, what you do, if you... It's not the paperwork that's going to necessarily get you out of the mess. That's just the beginning. It's yeah. really knowing why you did what you did. And then when you're faced with corporate authorities, you can speak accordingly in order because it's not the process. You can't say, oh, this is the process, but it didn't work for me. Well, if you didn't yeah. study what you're doing, um, paperwork's worth nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. I hope I helped. Thank you so much. No, really enjoyed it. And uh, I'll wait for you to send me the links over and I'll update this and put uh, the links on there. Thank you, Kim. Thank um, you very much. Have a great day and I'll speak to you soon. You Thank too. you, everyone. Bye Thank for you now. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye. Bye.